Hello everybody and we're into the final straight here on F1 2013 with the Caterham Kings themselves. Balkenberg calling your action right now and alongside me as ever is Esther Ben. How are you doing? Uh, bono Estende. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, it's been quite a while. It's been about, what, three weeks since we recorded Race 17? Yeah, yeah. We, are, um, we, we got busy for a yeah. little bit. <laughs> But, see that I think that's really good because we, we managed to condense stuff down, you know, and and we've got three weeks worth of news to catch up on. Exactly, all of the F1 tests, we've got all that to deal with. Oh, we've got tons actually. Good, that was a good call. Good call. It was. It was a good accidental call. Loving that. It's good segues. Just having a quick look at the old uh, standings. Alonso and Rosberg separated by a point up top with Vettel and Hamilton behind. I'm a point ahead of Raikkonen in seventh and eighth. And you are very much sandwiched in that 13, lucky for some slot. <laughs> yeah, I, I am the Pasta Maldonado of uh, the current table. You are doing very I well. I just noticed as well that like, you've more than doubled my points tally. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Sebastian. Whatever. Ah, ah, boo. Never mind. And in the old constructors... Caterham may tell us off every single race, but we're sixth and we're only five points behind McLaren. <laughs> Which, you know, is essentially where Fernandez wants Caterham to be this season or else he's going to pull the plug, right? <laughs> yeah, and judging by the pre-season testing, being seven seconds off everyone else, not really going to be uh, doing that one anytime soon, I don't think. Shocking. So, um, shall we dive in? It's Let's get an old moosey nose in. Let's do it. We're on to the good old US of A. Yes, circuit of all the Americas put together. Yep, all, all of them. <laughs> all of them. The all top, the bottom, the east, the west, every every America. A little sandwich of jello and peanut butter in the middle. It's um, I quite like it as a track, but there is a corner complex that always throws me off. And it's been a while since I've driven this track, so I will point it out when I find it. Um, But it is an interesting circuit, I think. It's one of the few new tracks that actually does a good job of being a track. Yeah, and brings something interesting and new to the table that isn't for the spectators sitting on the outside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a glow-in-the-dark hotel or a we're doing our race at four in the morning to six in the morning because sunsets races are just so last year. <laughs> Those kind of things. And actually having a decent track solves a lot of the issues. <laughs> well, and it's dry. Yeah, we're on one for a dry. I'm beginning to think, right, that because it tells you the track temperature, that that maybe has a bearing on something. I'd imagine so. It may be. It certainly does in um, R Factor. And I must apologise in advance. I've been playing a, um online racing sim racing season and my controller settings, Boo controller, set up completely different. So I may be trying to curse instead of going up and down gears and everything like that. So this could be an absolute state. So business as usual then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just so you go out. <clears throat> I like the fact that this pit lane is dusty. Well, this is the first time I've touched this game since you and I... Oh dear, that wasn't pretty. Uh, since you and I last <laughs> recorded our episode... And I've, in the meantime, I've been playing um, MotoGP 13, which you recommended to me about halfway through this season. Yes. How are you finding it? Um, good. There's, there's so many features in there that I think the F1 games could do very well to adopt. It's not as graphically pretty. No. And it doesn't have the same... I don't know. I'm, I'm not doubting its simulator credentials, but it doesn't... It feels a semi arcade experience. I don't know if you would agree yeah i would actually it's, it's much more difficult the further up the uh moto gp calendar you get but certainly in the earlier like lower formulae you can kind of floor it break it yeah i mean it's strange that like you i found that i actually perform better when i break in the middle of a corner which goes against everything i've ever learned yes when it comes <laughs> to racing um and it's weird how you know it doesn't so much grip um, as sort of propels itself, strangely. And you, you turn and only your head turns and the bike just shoots off in the direction it wants to go. And 
<laughs> keeping yourself on the straight and narrow is really quite difficult. But what I really liked was the interaction with your race engineer. Yes, that is amazing. Especially um, when it takes the piss out of you for asking that you're having troubles down the street. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's, it's quite well done and it just demystifies the setup system. Yeah, I learned um, so much from setup from that game. I don't know if it actually applies to actual car games, but it made me feel like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, it sort of <laughs> flatters you a bit, right? And yeah. there's a good variety of teams and, and chassis. You can work your way up from Moto3 through Moto2 to MotoGP, which I think, at least having GP2, um, if not Formula 3 as well, mm-hmm. I think would be incredibly helpful for these games. Oh yeah, definitely. Not Not least because, like, I mean, we're rubbish, right? And everyone knows it. Yeah. Um, but the only way you're going to improve, really, is if the game gives you better feedback. And I think that's something that they need to work on in, in the F1 games, definitely. I mean, your race engineer saying your tyres are a bit cold or something like that, you know, the occasional throwaway comments he makes, don't really help anybody. You know, why can't <laughs> he give you feedback? Or why can't you speak to him and find out how you can get more performance out of the car right why can't you tell him the car feels all wrong because it's a catering mm-hmm. could you do something about that stick a mercedes benz uh, badge on the front perhaps <laughs> yeah no i completely agree with that and i remember um in fact maybe i know i don't but i'm sure i remember old games of old having like proper in-depth telemetry screens and i may be thinking of the old grand prix three Grand Prix four games or something. I'm not sure. But I remember specifically looking at really in-depth telemetry screens and looking at pretty graphs and thinking, oh, they look like I could really be doing something with those. Never did, but... That's true. This game doesn't give you any telemetry, does it? No. And so you are very much in the guess ballpark of it. Uh, I'm in fourth. You're doing really, really well, mate. Maybe we should take breaks more often. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be fair, I would say that th- that did sound a little bit like I'd drawn you a nice picture and you were going to stick it on the fridge. <laughs> right, it's all gone to balls now because I'm trying to get out of the way of Lewis Hamilton and he won't go by. Just get, just get through. Thank you. I do like this track from the sense that it's it's just like one constant corner, isn't it? You just feel constantly... It's, like it's constant coaster. chicanes. It I very, like, kind, I very like, kindly let you through there because I'm, 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 I'm on an in-lap. Oh, thank you, mate. That's a real inter-teamage. Well, I'm coming in. I'm going to put some fresh tyres on and then try doing the lap again, but actually turning my fuel mixture up to three because I didn't. Ooh. So there's, there's room in there yet. There's a little bit more to come, I think. I don't think there is from me. I'm all over the shot. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm catching you on fuel mix one, which does not sound anything like what's been going on this season. And I'm on fuel mix three. Oh, yeah, I can tell now because you just... Yeah, you just burned it. <laughs> um, but, you know, enough of our nonsense. Um, real F1. What? Yeah. What indeed. Oh, that's oh I've just realised something quite interesting. I don't know where the pit lane entrance is. You've gone around <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's um, on the inside, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw it now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's quite all right. Um, so, real F1. Yeah. Um, first of all, you mentioned already about uh, Caterham. Um, Kobayashi came out and said that he'd be better off bringing a GP2 car. Yeah. Which I thought probably doesn't win him any brownie points with, uh, with Tone. But the fact is, the car seems to be a bit of a dog, doesn't it? And it's over a second slower than a Marussia. That's when you know you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're—that's your only credible rival, or has been previously. Yeah. Oh, nearly lost the back end. That. I'm watching all your great recoveries. 
showering me in beautiful lights. Um, yeah, it, Caterham looked like to be in real shit, but then so does every Renault-powered car. Don't they? Because that Renault engine does not look massively powerful right. and looks about as f- most fragile as a Ming vase and a bull going at it. It's... Yeah, it's not good. Uh, right, I've balls my lap, so... Um, I was keeping you on screen for some screen time. Oh, well, sorry about that, but I don't have enough um, fuel to get around another lap, and um, I run massively wide while I was trying to think of something interesting to say about testing. Um, which Red wasn't explosions. possible. Explosions. Um, yeah, the thing about Renault is I wouldn't I wouldn't expect them to... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so busy laughing at you. I've binned it as well. <laughs> John Aspin will oh, how spectacular was that? <laughs> Every race, I get an email from John Aspinwall who's like, "You should just test games because you can't even get in a pit lane, and now neither of us can." <laughs> yeah, that's my well, in my defence, that's my first pit lane balls up. <laughs> that's my first pit lane balls up. <laughs> Amazing. I just, I was a yeah. It may have been clear from the conversation we've had so far, but I've been finding it quite difficult to concentrate on what I'm doing and talk at the same time. And <laughs> that was just that peaking there. Ding. <laughs> I just locked it completely. That's phenomenal. <clears throat> so, yeah, he basically they need to do something, but I wouldn't count Renault out. I'd never count Renault out. To me, like the small turbo engine is exactly their territory. See, because last time there was turbos, they struggled with their Renault team in the 80s. That's why I'm slightly worried. Yeah, they, they, they struggled initially, but I mean, they turned it round, right? Um, I, I can't remember. I just remember in the early 80s that their cars were massively fast, but they had like a 30% finishing record. Um. And it all, all was sad because they could have been, they could have won lots and lots of stuff had the cars actually been alive. Well, I, I, again, like I say, they they had that period, but as I recall, Renault Turbos went on to become something of a success story in F1, and I'm not saying they're necessarily going to hit the stride that Mercedes seems to have found, but. Certainly, the Ferrari doesn't seem bulletproof, and no, I I would suspect that that's what's um, going to be comparable. You, you're going to find that the Renault and the Ferrari are probably going to end up about on par. That's my prediction. It might take a few races, but that they'll get there, I'm sure. As for the teams they power, I mean, really, we shouldn't also just pin this all on Renault, you know, because Lotus don't seem to have had the kind of problems that the other Renault powered teams have had. And I was ready to write Lotus off for this season. Yes, because of all, all the stuff that's gone on behind the scenes, you kind of think, God, how are they ever going to have a car that's worthwhile? But actually, I suppose oh, maybe shit. the work was done. Penalty. Sorry. Maybe the work was done, you know. I, I'm starting to wonder if maybe they won't feel the pain from all these poachings until next year. Mm, that's true, because if they are all breaking off so early in the year to start looking at next year's, won't they? And I, you know, I think it's pretty clear at the moment that Mercedes are going to be in an excellent position, but for the other Mercedes teams, it's hard to say, because if you'd asked me seven or eight days ago I would have said McLaren was the number two uh, Mercedes team mm. now Force India well actually I'd probably go as far as say Williams oh sorry Williams yeah sorry that's my f- I forgot Williams were Mercedes now um, because they have been beavering away quite quietly not much fanfare but then I believe uh, Bottas was faster so- sorry Bottas <laughs> um, was fastest uh, this morning. Massa set the fastest time of anybody across any of the testing sessions. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, at the time um, 
of the close of test yesterday. And I know Force India have been looking pretty fighty as well, but how good would it be to see Williams really bang on the money? I mean, it just seems like everything's falling into place for them. They've got a big new title sponsorship deal with Martini. Yeah. New they have... Which um, fapping all over as well. Yeah, I mean, they, they have lots of Brazilian cash now. Lots of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Petrobras has stayed on board as well. I think they're looking very, very feisty. And I sorely hope, just desperately hope, that this season works out for them. Yeah, no, agreed, agreed. I think they're due a resurgence. I really want them to, especially because they're essentially the only fully fledged, completely on their own manufacturer who stayed on their own constantly um, with no flitting back and forth. And there's something to be said for that, I think, for digging in, even through the shit times. And it's it's a bit like the Braun GP thing. If they could have like a big renaissance and come back in we need a feel good story again we do need a feel good story and we to be honest no one needs one more than Williams or Felipe Massa yeah both both that would be amazing if like Massa took a win um, or something like that and everyone went oh actually just being beaten up and being everyone's bitch at Ferrari for years really has taken its toll especially because I was watching I think I've said this before um, but where I've been not too well the last day or so, I was watching 2007 F1 uh, season review DVD. Um, and you forget how like feisty one he was. Um, and he still is to an extent, but you can see it's like a lost racecraft in a way that sorely needs to return. And if you're given the confidence, it's only going to... It's like that sausage roll effect. It just gets more and more and more and more and more and more and more. more. He's, um, yeah, he's sort of had the the hunger knocked out of him a little bit. Mm. And it'd be easy to blame it all on the accident he had, but I think that would be a disservice. I, yeah. I think it's the culture at Ferrari. You know, they've always been a one-driver team, historically. And how that dynamic works out for Kimi is interesting. Yeah. People automatically assume that it's going to be Fernando that has the team's backing, but if that's the case, why bring Kimi at all? Yeah. Because he was knocked the stuffing out of him when he was there before, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think people might forget that a little bit as well. Um, Just like to point out that we've qualified for this uh, race in the same positions we're in in the cha- championship. Oh, wow. Maze balls. I've got ten place grid drop, but and you out qualified me again, even though I was looking, I was looking stronger at the start oh. at least. <clears throat> let me let me spectate. I've got I've got to maintain this one hundred percent out qualifying record for you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then it doesn't look like it was a fluke. You've got to because then you're like proper Esteban Gutierrez. Then <laughs> <laughs> it's um. It's interesting um, with him as well, actually. I'll be curious to see what he does in his second season. Yeah, because Sutil ain't quite the Hulkenberg, is he? No, he's not. And I think this... Bring, I like him, out him. He's from, not. <laughs> you know, bring him out from the shadow of a, a much better teammate. And maybe you'll see a bit more shine from him. Then again, the car seems a little bit touch and go as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, he don't be out of fuel... Oh, yeah, I can hear it. You can make up with it with the curves, though. Oh, Frenchie, out of my way. 7th oh. and 13th, I think we'll take it. I think so. Not bad at all. What was Hamilton doing in 18th? Oh, um, I held him up just consistently. <laughs> <laughs> just consistently held him up. Well done, well done, that man. Uh, I, I just wish it had been Vettel. Uh, well, well, he's not going to win this championship, that's all, I'm saying. Well, you got a feel for Daniel Ricciardo, though, right? Yeah, poor guy, moving across to um, the team, the fabled team, and it could well end up that Toro Rosso end up better and Vern and um, 
<laughs> may end up trolling in his chops. I, I, well, to be honest, I here's my prediction for oh oh for the back three teams. Okay. I think right down at the back of the grid, you're going to see Caterham. Yep. Toro Rosso. Mm-hmm. And at this stage, I'd probably say Sauber. I don't think Red Bull are going to be as far back as we reckon. No, no, I don't. But in terms of point standings, I think all of those teams have a better chance of finishing the race <laughs> than, than Red Bull do at the moment. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have... To, like with this stupid double points thing, they might as well have just moved it to the first race of the season because that's going to be the one that does the lottery. <laughs> No, exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm going primes. Okay. And apparently they will last me all the way through, as long as I want. So I'll stop lap nine. How's that grab you? Yeah, my options seem to want to last forever as well. Um, Yeah, that's fine. I will stop on... I'll go options then. I don't go for prime and I'll stop on lap eight then. Delightful. That may change on the fly if <clears throat> I'm eating them up like a moose. Uh, yeah, as as mine will too. Um, Good luck, Jim. And to you. Right, let's let's try and order my thoughts now. Um, <laughs> it was a bit all over the place there. I'm just, just settling back in. So self self critical. <clears throat> oh. So. We've talked most in, in most detail about Caterham, but Marussia, the uh, the previous backmarking team, that's really caught my eye because we both said three weeks ago that the car looks good. You know, mm-hmm. it's a solid, solid design. It doesn't look ugly. <laughs> no, it's quite an elegant solution. Yes. Um, how do you think they're actually going to fare? And do you think their choice to retain Chilton will come into play? It, you know, given that he's got a good finishing record, if they yes. can um, have not necessarily a competitive car, but a reliable one, mm-hmm. I do you think... think that could be a combination that could finally pay off? Yes, I do, actually. I think they knew potentially the long game all along. Oh, shit. Um, And they know its consistency is king, I think, for 2014. And who better to do it than the guy that... Ooh, lagalicious. um, That brought it home every race. In his debut season, no less. Yeah. And I know people are like, well, you would bring it home if you're not pushing it to the limit. But these cars aren't going to be about pushing it to the limit because he might have been amazing on fuel consumption and things like that, that's going to play a huge part. Who knows of the hidden talents that Max Chilton may actually have. Yeah, he could actually be a fantastic sculptor. Yeah, who knows, who knows. And it reminds me of, um, say, a Pedro Diniz type character who second year round, now that he's comfortable, may not be so bad. And he wasn't terrible. He really (laughs) wasn't terrible. I think the bar was so low for him. Um, well, not sorry. The bar was so low. The expectation of just being so horrible to him was so low that he out he outperformed people's expectations, even if he was still last. And Bianchi, I think, is going to be a real man for the future, anyway. I'd actually love Max Shelton to turn out to be a success story. <laughs> I, I no, I genuinely would because I don't see any young British drivers coming through at the moment because Sam Bird has been there or thereabouts now for about three years and yeah. pretty, I, I could be wrong but I, I've got the feeling that maybe he doesn't have all the backing that's required I don't know what's holding him back exactly but to my mind they should have been giving him a punt this year and the fact he hasn't got one is I take it as a sign that there's something that you know there's a wider consideration in play. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if Max Chilton's all we've got, then Max Chilton is all we've got. And I'm willing to support him on that basis. 
That's so British. Um, I quite like um, Nick Yololi only because of his amazing surname in uh, GP3. <laughs> um, how on earth has someone got a surname that just sounds like you want to lick your lolly? I've got no idea. But he gets my backing on that basis alone. Well, it's good that both of us are um, so professional as to endorse drivers based on their racecraft alone and not their novelty value. <laughs> um, now, moving slightly up the grid... Like we are currently at the moment. Let's not yeah, tempt no. fate. Let's, let's not talk about our race, because it's going a bit well, he says, as yeah, it goes yeah, off. Yeah, it is, isn't it? In the background. <laughs> That's what you get, you see, for yeah. acknowledging the situation. Sozzle. Um, you're going to be faster than me as well because you're on the softer tyre. You're driving much better. Um, <clears throat> moving slightly up the grid, we've already touched on Toro Rosso a little bit, mm-hmm. but they don't seem to be having quite the problems of the mothership. No. But the car itself, I don't really have much faith in. Thoughts? Um, they're like Secret Squirrel. They've not really done my attention in any way shape or form at all and every time I have got their attention it's because their car's at the side of the road so I'm not particularly um oh, I've got to hand back your position Soz. <laughs> you, yeah you were going to say was that an o- illegal overtake that's a little bit oh I reckon um, I'll have you back though gimme Thank you very much. Well, that was an horrific take of that corner. Um, That's all right. That you took out the bullard really well. You'll be proud of that on the replay. Yeah, I know. I, I, that's the only thing I was thinking. I was like, at least it's got sort of a semi Bruce Willis quality to it. Exactly. Die hard with a die hard with Benji. I'm coming through. I didn't mean to. Die hard with a vengeance. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> die hard with an Esther vengeance. Oh, I nudged the back of you there, Simon. I am. Um, that's all right, as long as you still got wings. Unlike every single energy spirit drink sponsored car. <laughs> um, oh, so, God. yeah, Toro that... Rosso, the jury's out on. Force India, though. That's looking nifty. It is, and not just in terms of its livery. Yes, we do still give the seal of approval on its livery. Now that I've seen it out in action, I do like that livery. Yeah, and it, again, I recognise that it's something that shouldn't work, but it does. So, yeah, and anything that is not red or bl- or white, um, oh my god, that's not even where the corner is, Simon. Yeah, I was going to say that was an interesting line, Simon. <laughs> I thought I was braking at the hundred meter board, and that's where I just automatically turned in, then realised I was doing it at the one fifty. Soz, um, I've got to stop saying Soz as well. Um, Soz, no. What was I going to say? Yeah, the problem. Sorry, the my personal hate is leveries that are just red or white. Um, and let's hope the trend doesn't now start going, let's just everyone have a black leavery. But I'm happy with a couple of cars having that on the grid. Yeah, um, I'll be interested to see what McLaren finally roll out. Um, speaking of leveries, because there's no way they're staying with that silver thing. Well, they haven't got a title sponsor, have they? So I'd imagine... Well, they said they were supposed to announce one. But they said they would announce it in January. And then they said, no, it'll be later now. Are they bullying us? <laughs> that is a new verb that needs to happen. <laughs> oh, with this Ferrero Rocher, you are really bullying me. <laughs> That's bullier shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, because they have signed him. So maybe they were thinking, oh, dear, this is a bit of a PR, PR disaster. Who do we know who's got the cojones to uh, keep the press at bay for a few months? Yeah, consider- Get Eric on the phone. Give him a well. I wonder if one of his interview questions was, so how can you hide £115 million of debt? <laughs> um. <laughs> Clearly not under Ron's head. Voila! Yeah. <laughs> But no, it's very. It's. I'll be interested to see because a lot of people keep calling for McLaren to return to orange. Yeah, which I know it's traditionally their colour, but it hasn't traditionally been their colour for about fifty years. Yeah, um, they just rolled it out for the occasional test session. Just yeah, like which they were supposed to do this time, um, but they didn't. 
No, I'm okay with there being that silver, so long as the silver is a different shade to the Mercedes. And I suppose we could just see which silver is out front or not, because we all know which one it's probably going to be. Well, you see, the thing is, is I thought McLaren looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, now I'm not so sure. I I don't know if this is just me projecting, right, and it's just my wishful thinking, but I really do feel and hope that Williams are going to be the second team. But anyway, we're, we were on Force India, weren't we? Yes. Keep it on track, Ben. Jesus. Although I was going to say, just whilst we were chatting about McLaren, how, how do you think Kevin Magnussen's gone so far? Fantastically. I really do feel that he's impressed me. Um, your silence tells me that you're going to disagree. No, no, my silence was, I can't remember what gear that corner was. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, um, agreed, agreed. I think Button has reason to be concerned, and I think he will be a much stiffer opponent to break than Perez, which ended up being like a yappy terrier. Yeah, I mean, Perez had a go, but... You always felt it was sort of a roll of the dice situation. Yeah, his was more on luck based than judgment, it felt. And you felt like it wasn't the right fit. I remember it on the signing. I was like, oh, that's an interesting signing. Can't quite see how that one will work, but I'll be interested to see. And yeah, I, it just went to prove the point, really. Whereas um, Perez at Force India, segue, segue, is... That feels okay, because with Perez, I can just see him being an awesome mid-team person, never a front person. I, I know exactly what you mean. Like Frentzen. He... Frentzen, as soon as he got into a top team, he was all like, no, 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 back, back. I like the, I like the lower end of the top ten. Yeah, send me to arrows, please. Yeah, and then I'll be amazing again, because the pressure's off, and I just don't think he's a pressure bunny kind of guy. No, he's not, you're right. And the thing is... If I check my Twitter for... Not now. Not now. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that I describe McLaren signing Perez as the stupidest thing in all the world. And... <laughs> Harsh. Like, it's not that I was necessarily anti-Perez, because Sauber is probably my favourite team still on the grid. Aww. And so him doing well for them was good for me. Um, it's just that it's like you say, it just felt a bad fit. It just felt a wrong choice. Yeah. And it felt too soon. Yeah. You know, he was a Ferrari Academy driver, right? No doubt if they'd left him at Sauber for a few more years, maybe he could turn out to be a passable Ferrari driver. Whether he'd be Ferrari's number one is a different matter. But, you know, if they could whip the fight out of him a little bit, <clears throat> I'm sure he'd make an excellent Barrichello. Um Oh my god, people have managed to pit and get out before we've caught them up. It's because it's such a short pit road. That's upsetting. That's upsetting me. I thought we were going to do alright there. But yeah, I'm glad I'm I've stayed on the right. back of you for once. I am really struggling <laughs> to remember how to drive this bloody car. I don't like this circuit. I've changed my, changed my mind. What a fool I was 10 to 15 minutes ago. But this could well be your best finish yet so far. My best and legit finish, yeah. Depending on how um, all those people that pitted in behind you deal with the world. Oh, unlucky Rosberg! Oh, go you, mate. Uh, sorry, I was so pleased with that that I felt the need to sing. <laughs> that I had to sing it. Um. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's, it'll be interesting to see Perez at Force India. He is, like you say, a mid-team sort of guy. And they... Gary Anderson, he came out in Autosport and controversially ranked Force India as his number three team going into the season. Hmm. And I say controversial because I would disagree with it, right? And I think most people probably would. But then again, you know, he's a professional a very seasoned professional and maybe he's seen something that the rest of us haven't and the other factor is that he probably still has connections with that team and maybe he's got insider info and 
his testing predictions historically have always been fairly reliable. Mm-hmm. So failing Williams being completely off the wall dominant, I would love, love, love to see Force India step up to be a number three team. Yep. I'm not sure who I'd like to see knocked down. Um, Red Bull. Aside from Red Bull. Um, but, you know, looking at it at the moment, you've got Mercedes stepping into what was Red Bull's position, right? And then you're probably going to have, I guess, Ferrari or McLaren are going to be there or thereabouts. I don't know who I would sacrifice from the other teams to, to let them up. It's a team I've always had affection for, but just not enough. They're like a stepchild. <laughs> not like, really your own. Yeah, you sort of you care about them, but, you know... It's not your genes they're carrying, so it's probably a secondary consideration. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's not put you on the Maury show. Well, you know, I just thought what what this needs, aside from more, more real F1 news, is needless controversy. <laughs> yeah. And that's my contribution. And I've just been spun round by Rosberg, and I got a penalty for it. Oh no! Yep, I did. I got a penalty for being spun round. That is crazy in a shit heap thing. It's insane in the membrane, as Cypress Hill would say. Insane in the brain. I remember that song. But. Oh, that's annoying. I was looking forward to us having a double top six. Well, you know, it's not going to be too bad. I think I'm still going to get points, I think. But it just won't be many points. I've got my pit stop this lap and it's estimating I'll rejoin 11. So actually, that, no, that buggers it, doesn't it? Although, how did you manage to rejoin 6 from one position in front of me? Um, I've got four cars directly behind me, although I'm now pulling away. These tyres are so much better, and they're they're supposed to be the ones with no grip. Work that out. Oh, well, that doesn't bode well, because I've been on those (laughs) tyres at the start. Maybe I'm just getting my eye in. I'm not sure. My back end grip's gone completely. I need to come in this lap. That is what needs to happen. Let's turn the fuel mixture up. Well, there um, is a massive gap between 10th and 11th. That's probably why you're going to slot in there. Yeah, but I don't want to slot in there. I want to slot in exactly where I am now, which is third. And my 10 second group penalty will still count for a point. Well, if in doubt, I can start playing Simon Train. It's, it's, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. I was just hoping that, you know, I could contribute towards the five points that we need to uh, catch McLaren. Sorry, we're going to fucking rape them. Well, actually, maybe not, but <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. Then. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it was like, there's controversy, Simon. And then there's controversy. <laughs> it's your fault. You started it <laughs> with, with your surrogate illegitimate child <laughs> that is so... a Force India Mexican. Exactly, but you know that's just Mexican compadre ship. So I'm uh, moving up even further. Um, Whoa, does he hide? I guess we should have touched on Williams before we touched on Force India, but we've already said everything that really needs to be said there. Mm-hmm. Just they are looking fantastic. Did you know they they dedicated an entire day to pit stop practice? Wow! Because they were they just hadn't had the reliability problems that they. Uh, they expected to have. How good's that? That would be great if you was actually. If it, that that shows confidence, surely. Yeah, it does. The fact that you know, just just do some sub practice, lads. I think we've got this covered. See, the only thing that I would say about that, I don't know if it's just me in general, but when you go testing, especially with all the reliability issues and stuff like that, surely you should be spending count loads of money. Just sending loads and loads of the same part out because you know it's going to explode and just keep on trying to do as many laps as possible. And it really hasn't seemed like that this season in testing. 
And no. you could just get all the guys to turn up at Grove at their head office and just go, right, lads, today we're doing a pit stop practice day. Not look at everyone else being having their cars cranked back and going, right, lads, pit stop practice. Yeah. Uh, I'd still be, because time is so limited, unless it is just so expensive to run stuff these days that you just don't want to. In which case, F1's in its own trouble itself. I don't know. It just seems a weird... I'd want to be out there testing all day, every day, even if that meant that it was going to affect some reliability issues. I don't know. Well, it does seem a bit of a odd thing to do. I, I concur, right? I mean, if you're going to use resources, you would use them on improving the car. I get that. But... Um, at the same time, I think something like that, publicity-wise, and certainly in terms of sponsors, maybe you know they're tying off another contract of some kind, and they want to project to a sponsor like, "Hey, if anyone's ready for the season, it's Williams, and you're not going to regret spending your money with us." Yeah, it's a pretty ballsy thing to do. Although I still don't think the logic would really justify the choice. The other thing, of course, though, is that the press have got it wrong, and actually the car wouldn't start. So they're like, <laughs> oh. Bugger it, just just do some pit stop practice, whatever. Don't just stand there. That's amazing. That that I would find hilarious, actually. Um also props to uh Valtteri Bartas for Bartas. Uh, picking the number seventy seven. Which so is my that, number. So now they can uh, change Bartas to Bar seventy seven ass uh, on Twitter. Such a social media whore in rating. You know, you know that was why it was chosen, right? And you know it probably wasn't him that chose it. No. It does also mean, though, that should I ever enter Formula One, I can't now choose my favourite number, which I use on all my sim racing. So 77's thanks. your number? Yeah. Got your number. If, if I'm allowed to choose something, it's always 77. Why don't you fight him for it? I think I'll put in a FIA issue on the call we'll let, we'll have to go out then we can see if bernie can get through a door again and yeah yeah you can challenge him to a duel pick your weapon bot ass i choose the shovel yeah you can have 88 and be bot ass yeah bot ass yeah i mean i i think that's fine well surely he'd be bot no he wouldn't be bot would he he'd be boss I don't know. We're entering a linguistic minefield here. Maybe we should just let him keep 77. So long as he's still bot on the um, rundowns of stuff. Um, and we still got... Because what was the funny one that came out last year? Uh, bot Groper, that was it. Yeah. Bot Groper. So he can be Bot Groper. Oh, it's these little things in life that we live for. Who's next on the team list? Uh, let me think. Uh, we're probably up to McLaren. Yeah. I would think. On oh, Sauber. Sorry, no, it was Sauber. Oh, I've picked up marbles just when I was catching the back of Raikkonen. This is unfortunate. Goodbye, points. Goodbye. No. It was sweet flirting. You're going to be fan. You're going to be fan. Um, yeah, Sauber. Now... The problem they've been having, aside from the car catching fire intermittently, is <laughs> that they've got a brake-by-wire system, which I'm going to hold my hand up now and say straight away, I haven't had time to research. I don't understand it at all. I can only assume they picked it because it was a good idea. Some engineers may disagree. I, I don't know. But the only reason I could think of for doing something like that would be you see a real advantage in it. Um, and... Yesterday, Saturday, um, Adrian Suttil's day of testing was completely balls because of a problem with him. Mm. Uh, so they called him back for half a day today. They're a team that I'm having real trouble placing. Yeah. I think it'll be a slow burner like this uh, 2013 where they're going to end up with a car that looks like a dog and then spend a lot of time trying to get it back. Only they won't have the Hulkenberg caliber of a driver to really push them in the points. And so I they'll mean, be late. How perfect a marriage was that? Sauber and Hulkenberg. 
they just seem to know how to build a car that he could grab by the neck and throttle. Took him a long, t- took them a long time to get there. I don't know if they just arrived poorly or if it just wasn't for his liking. I'm not sure, but um, they got there in the end, and that was great. Um, it's just a shame for continuity-wise that it's just it's all fallen flat because I'm assuming the old Dosheru. But it could turn out to be a good move for him back to Force India, right? If, oh, definitely. If they're in the position that we think they are. And I don't think Perez has got the legs to take on Hulkenberg. No, and I think that I think only one of those um, at Force India, and I would say for Sauber as well, only one of those from each team will be there for 2015. Only one can survive. Yeah, because it's it's going to... Yeah. <laughs> explosion across screen well that's what Bernie's going for right yeah it would be like Survivor each one's voted off the team because Perez has come off the back of a brow beating from McLaren and so needs to prove himself Hulkenberg is like will some top team take me so one of those is going to end up looking a bit humiliated and I think it will be Perez in that duo the Sauber people, Gutierrez, one more chance or you're out the door. And Sutil, can you really survive outside Force India slash Spiker slash um, everything else that Midland. team has ever been co? Yeah. Was he there in the Midland year? I can't remember. No, it's 2007 he started. Um, because he's been only driving for that team under all of its name guises. And so now that he's done that, it reminds me of um, Panis when he went from Ligier slash Prost to BAR. And I was like, this is going to be a sink or swimmer for you. And yeah. thankfully he swum. But I'm not unsure if Sutil will be able to. I don't know. I've always rated Sutil, I'll be honest. I've always thought he's a driver who can switch it on. Yes, but, but he he's... needs to do it all the time. Y- yeah, he's a Yano Trulli figure for me. Yeah, yeah. Like he's got the skill and the speed, but he just doesn't always bring the consistency to the table. Yeah, and when it does, there's always that, is he going to bin it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe not to the level you get with Pastor Maldonado, because the answer is usually yes, he's going to bin it. Yeah. Um, but Rough diamond. Yeah, exactly. And we've reached the end of the race and not touched on the top teams, but I think that's a good thing, because there's not really much to talk about with them. No, we can always finish them off in our season finale. Um, that's interesting. I've managed to only drop two places with a 10-second grid penalty, but it still denies me points. Oh, 11. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, and you know, I think if I'd been on a slightly different pit strategy on a different day, I could have. I think 6th or 7th could have been possible. But... Oh, you had the legs on me. And you can see on the timings that we were nine identical in laps. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was faster than Yo. the guys in eighth and <laughs> seventh, sixth and fifth. But I caught that train of four cars up. I just ah. didn't have the tyres left to get round them, unfortunately. Damn it! But never mind, never mind. I think that is cause for cause for joy. That is. Also, when we when we're breaking between episodes, I'm going to bring up John's email right because we said it was really really good and then I didn't have it in front of me and I didn't take notes like I normally do Mm -hmm. and I still think there's some stuff in there that that merits a a good a good amount of conversation so yeah big finale big finale guacamole down in Mexicano with old Esther Ben and Balkenberg thank you everyone for joining us and uh, stay tuned we're off to Interlagos get your maracas out Oh yeah, see you soon.